One of the scariest things for a lot of people, I think, is surgery because there's so much unknown. You basically go to sleep and you wake up, something's been cut out of you or a hole inserted or made or it's pretty terrifying. Today, I have some stories of surgeries gone terribly wrong by one doctor who may have done these horrid things on purpose. Today, we're looking at the story of Christopher Dunch, and it's, uh, it's a little graphic, a little gory, so I would advise you as a viewer to use discretion. So, you could say, viewer discretion advised. <laughs> I know. Before we get into the story, I'm sharing something new on the channel, which is stories that I find very interesting, and they are stories that are true, but are baffling. Some will be stories like today that are very well documented and horrifying. Others are just absolutely bizarre and have zero explanation. And uh, while I tell the stories, I'll be smoking my pipe. Today, I'm smoking Bing's favorite pipe. Delicious pipe. Actually, the pipe isn't delicious. It's what I put in the pipe, which is, I don't know what this is. It's called 1Q. Anyways, it tastes delicious. Let's get started. Like I said at the beginning, this gets a little graphic, a little gory, and a very, very disturbing. <sighs> Let's jump in. Let me paint an image. Just follow me with this. You're going in for surgery, and it's surgery on your back. It's surgery actually on your spine. I don't know if you've ever had surgery before, but when you come out of surgery, it's a process where you're kind of conscious and then you gain a little bit more consciousness, a little bit more, a little bit more. It's a weird experience. So imagine you're laying there and you're dreaming. So you're conscious kind of that you're dreaming, but you don't know if it's a dream or it's reality. It's just plain in your mind. And you're, you feel excruciating pain in your dream. Imagine slowly coming into consciousness and realizing that pain, that dread, that terror that you felt in your dream is becoming more and more real as you come into consciousness. And you realize screams that you were hearing in your dream are your own. And the pain that you experience in your dream is now more and more real and becoming more and more real as you come to. This is what happened to Lee Passmore. He went in for surgery on his spine and woke up in searing, excruciating, screaming out of your mind pain. Not the way you want to wake up from surgery, but a nightmare situation that's real. The pain it would turn out came from, I'm reading my notes here, um, a ligament in his leg that had been severed during surgery. Not just that, the majority of the pain was because of a screw that was lodged into a nerve bundle. I don't know what a nerve bundle is. I know you probably think I'm a surgeon or a doctor or something because I have a pipe, but I'm not. So I don't know what a nerve bundle is, but it seems like something you don't want a screw lodged into and left there and then wake up from surgery. That's exactly what happened to this poor guy. And similar stories came out from more than 30 other patients of Christopher Dunch, a doctor a surgeon who was performing surgeries up until I think 2013. I mean, it's relatively recent. I'm not gonna go into all the details of his story because it's extremely bizarre and detailed, but there is a new series on Peacock, uh, which is a streaming service um, that documents the whole entire thing. So if you wanna watch that, when my wife and I just finished watching it, we were like blown away and terrified. I'm just gonna go through some of the horror stories that came out of what he did. The series seems like, from what I've read, follows his story pretty dang closely, scary close. In fact, the series actually leaves out some of the gory details of what actually happened to these poor patients of this surgeon, which is what I'll tell you about today. So buckle up. Don't judge me for my constant relights. As you know, if you smoke one of these, these tobacco pipes take a lot of focus and attention. And we're trying to make a video talking about something and you forget about it and it goes out. So it's gonna be a lot of relights. So back to Lee Passmore, who woke up in excruciating pain. It turns out 
the initial physical pain he felt in the hospital was almost nothing compared to the lifelong issues he dealt with because of this surgery. Let me list some of them. Lee had kids, and now after his surgery, he can't run, he can't swim, and he actually has a lot of trouble just peeing and pooping. Whatever job he had, it required him to walk, like many jobs, um, but he remembered the first time he got out of his bed at the hospital, he couldn't feel his feet. The bottom of his feet, there was like no sensation there. He said it feels like his feet are always asleep, and that's just the constant state. They're just, there's no feeling in his feet. So he can't really walk, he can't enjoy life with his kids like he could before the surgery, and there's constant pain. I don't know, it seems terrible. But it gets worse, because there's a lot more stories. So, Barry Mol, I don't know how to say his last name. Morguloff, Morguloff, I know I'm butchering his name. It's a poor choice of words, why don't you watch it? It's kind of a pun, it was kind of punny. <laughs> Barry woke up with, from surgery again, woke up with searing pain in his back and his left leg. It turns out it was from bone fragments lodged in his spinal canal during the operation. Holy cow. Just think about that for a minute. First of all, I mean, I've performed many surgeries over the years, but I'm not technically supposed to. I just did them because I'm extremely intelligent. I, would, I, I guess it's understandable that this may be bone fragments being removed from his spine because it was spinal surgery, but I would assume those little splinters of bone are supposed to be removed not lodged into your spinal canal. Holy cow. Kenneth Fennell, who was another patient of Dr. Dunch, he woke up to find that <laughs> Dr. Dunch operated on the wrong part of his body. Oops, sorry. Mary Ephraim, Ephraim, not Ephraim, Eferned, Eferned, whatever. Mary, like so many other patients of Dr. Dunch, woke up with screaming pain. Screaming pain is like, she described the pain as being, you know when you go to the hospital or the doctor and you have some pain and they ask you, what's your pain at from a one to 10? A uh, one is very mild, a 10 is like pain you've never experienced before. She described it as being so far off the chart of 10, she couldn't, there was no number. It was a 10 plus plus plus. Ugh, I, it, it's horrid. I just think to wake up from surgery, you're already nervous about what, what's the recovery gonna be like? How much is this gonna hurt when I wake up? That's, I think that's a real fear that I'll, probably most people have going into surgeries. What's this pain gonna be like when I wake up? What was her pain caused from, you may wonder. Let's, let's discover it together. It was caused by Dr. Dunch, who severed one of her nerve roots during a spinal fusion surgery and also operated on the wrong part of her back. He left screw holes on the opposite side of her spine, I'm assuming the opposite side of where the actual surgery was supposed to take place, there were screw holes, like screws were screwed in and then removed. What the heck? And he left surgical hardware, like, I don't know what, but whatever surgical hardware was supposed to be implanted into her spine to fix it, uh, it was, oh my gosh, it was left in her soft muscle tissue. And it was so loose, they said you could actually move it when you touched it. It was just like left in there. Not like implanted where it's supposed to be, just left in soft muscular tissue in her spine, just in there. Good Lord. It's like, it literally is like psychopathic, nightmarish. I don't know. I can't believe this actually happened. And a screw had been lodged in another nerve root near the bottom of her spine. Same as the other guy I was talking about, another screw into a nerve ending. Just, <sighs> aside from the physical pain she experienced waking up from surgery, she also woke up to find that she was paralyzed and was left paralyzed and is still paralyzed. Paralyzed for the rest of her life. Along with the graphic nature of the story, I should have also said, hey, if you have surgery or potential surgery coming up, you might want to stay clear of this video because I wouldn't want to hear these stories knowing that I'm going into surgery soon. I'll get into the details of Dr. Dunch, who he was, what his credentials were, and how this happened, but I've got a few more stories of his more than 30 patients who suffered under his care. Whew. Dang, it's loud out here and also really sweaty. Uh, 
Okay. Kelly Martin, another patient of Dr. Dunch, suffered major, oh, had a major artery severed during a minor back operation. She didn't fare so well. She bled to death because of the, the severed artery, major artery being severed. Uh, Flora Brown, another unfortunate patient of Dr. Dunch, also had, it was a vertebrae artery severed. So when it severed, there was, of course, blood everywhere. In fact, one doctor, or somebody who was in the operating room during the surgery said that, <sighs> a little gross, but the hole, you know, from the incision where they were working, looked like a pond of blood. You could not even see any of the tissue. It was just filled with blood, and Dr. Dunch was quoted as saying he can fill for where he needed to work rather than see. He didn't need to see it, he could just fill around. Didn't matter that the hole was filled with blood, whatever. As a way to combat some of the bleeding though, um, Dunch used, I don't know what it was, but it's some sub substance that was intended to stop bleeding, but apparently he used so much of it that she died from a stroke, and they, I guess they connected the stroke to whatever the substance is that he used way too much of in her, uh, and she died. Whew. Another patient of Dr. Dunch had a, hor a horrid infection, terrible infection when he woke up, which, you know, you wake up from surgery, you know that infection is a potential, but I guess it was extremely severe. So severe that finally another doctor had to go in and reopen the wound where the surgery was performed, and when he did, he found that there was, I don't know what you call it, it was basically a rag, like a, surgical rag to like, you know, I don't know, you stick in there to help with some of the, the blood or, or whatever. Anyways, dirty, filthy, nasty surgical rag was just left deep in the wound. And <laughs> it was just there, just left there. Uh, I'm almost done with all of these and then we'll get into details of Dr. Dunch. But Jerry Summers was, he described Dunch as his best friend. They'd known each other for a long time, really good friends. And he had a back injury. Uh, or neck injury. He had neck pain, so he had Dr. Dunch perform a surgery on him. Well, when he woke up from the surgery, he found that he was, he couldn't move any of his limbs. His arms, his legs were dead, and he actually had trouble breathing. Um, he said when he first woke up, he could move like a little bit. He could kind of shrug. So Dr. Dunch said, well, we need to go back in. There's an issue, obviously. Uh, so let's fix it. We'll take you back into surgery. No big deal. They went back into surgery and he woke up the second time. He could not move anything at all below his neck. Dead. Total quadriplegic. Uh, and apparently the issue was that Dr. Dunch removed large amounts of muscle, large amounts of muscle tissue. So much so, at least this is what they say in the show, they describe it as his head was basically disconnected from his spine. There was very little left attaching his head to his spine, which is why he couldn't move anything below his neck. <sighs> There's a longtime spine surgeon named Robert Henderson. He performed a lot of the salvage surgeries, they called them, where he'd um, re-perform surgeries on Dunch's patients to try to fix the absurdities he caused. And he likened Dunch's surgical work to a child playing with tinker toys or an erector set. Just, no good. Let's switch into Dr. Dunch. Little backstory on Dr. Dunch. That kind of paint the picture of what kind of guy he was, which is even more terrifying. To hear these stories and know that he's the surgeon, it blows my mind. Once he was stopped, and this was later in his career, like this was toward the end, after he had performed many of these surgeries. He was once uh, stopped for driving recklessly, and when the police pulled him over, the officer's report says that he was driving on two flat tires, one was completely gone and was on the rim, and they also found uh, empty bottles of Mike's Hard Lemonade um, on the council. On the console, that is. Not the council. That's a different word than console, so let's use the right word, shall we? In 2015, he was arrested for stealing $887 worth of Walmart merchandise, including five pairs of sunglasses, five watches, two pairs of shoes, four ties, two briefcases, a wallet, cologne, necklaces, and a walkie-talkie. Because what kid doesn't want a walkie-talkie? Or, you know, surgeon in his mid-40s. 
Okay, a little backstory on Christopher Dunch. Apparently, according to his CV, which is like a long resume, he earned a, doc a doctorate. I can't even say these words. It's a good thing I'm not a surgeon because I can't even say doctorate right, but I feel like I might be better than he was. So his CV claimed that he earned a doctorate in microbiology from very prestigious, 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 pres a really good school, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Okay, but apparently it's hard to track down any information that confirms any of this. Um, except for he did go through the University of Tennessee Health Science Center and earned his MD and apparently did very well in that. I guess the guy wasn't a dummy. He was actually really smart, at least in his head. That's the interesting thing. I mean, he went to school for 15 years or he had 15 years of training. So that was, he earned his MD, he had his PhD, he went through as much training as a neurosurgeon. Is that what he was, a neurosurgeon, I think? Yeah, neurosurgery. He did a surgical residency, spent the standard five years on neurosurgery and then another year learning general surgery. So he was extremely well-trained and from what I can tell, very smart. People said, just from reading these stories, that he was really a great researcher. Like on paper, he could figure things out. But in actually doing anything, like performing the surgeries, either he was act just horrible, horrible, horrible surgeon who was trying to do well but just couldn't, in which case he should have quit. Uh, he should have been like, this isn't for me, I should stop. <laughs> or he he did these things on purpose. He was trying to do this and there's a lot of there's a lot of evidence pointing towards he did these things on purpose. I won't go into in this video. There's I'm sure a ton of other videos out there that go into more details or you can watch the series. There's actually like a dramatization like a mini series like a narrative story on Peacock and there's also a documentary series. So you can do all the research yourself. In the end, he performed I don't remember how many, more than 30 surgeries. My gosh, these bugs are so loud. Two of them died, one was a quadriplegic, obviously. Others couldn't walk, and others have so far more severe pain than they had prior to the surgeries with him. Pretty much all of his patients, I think, ended up far worse than they were before they went in to see him, including, like I said, two dead. <sighs> and others, who wish they were dead. As terrible as that sounds. The scariest part, I think, of the whole story is that he was able to continue performing surgeries in primarily Texas is where he performed most of these surgeries. And the idea that he was able to keep performing these surgeries somehow, even though there was all this evidence to how terrible he was at it, he just was able to keep doing it. Luckily, he's now in jail prison actually for the rest of his life. Anyways, thanks for watching. It's very hot out here. If you enjoyed this story where I just light up a pipe and tell a story that's uh, pretty terrifying, uh, let me know in the comments because I will keep doing them if you enjoyed it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Oh, that's the other thing. You should subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of thing. I guess the best way to show me if you like the video is like it, thumbs it up, and then I know, oh, people liked it. I should do more of those. That's, that's a thing to do. All right, onward. Onward. That's gonna be my new tag, like onward. That's good. All right, goodbye. I can't say goodbye, I said onward. That's gotta be the end. Onward. That's stupid. Goodbye.